Shakria Todd, and I am here with Miss Dana Axon to talk about my book. And the title of this show is The Full Armor of God, and it is here to teach God's sons and daughters how to deal with workplace challenges and life challenges. So, without further ado, the hostess, Miss Dana. Oh, thank you for your welcome. So, uh, thank you for the nice welcome. I really want to talk about this awesome book. It's an awesome read. Um, I first want to center on the cover. Uh, it just kind of took me aback. It's, it's a powerful title, first of all. Uh, the Brainwashing of Black America, How God help, Helped Us to Overcome. And then you, when you look at the cover, you have a woman looking victorious, and then it shows in the, her in the midst of a cross burning, chains, a whip, and even a masked person, and a noose. So what's that, what's that all about? Well, what that is all about, and I'm so glad you asked and you paid attention to that because it, God is in the details. And so he brought the details of what he was and can free us from. So you mentioned the person in the mask. A lot of times people are masked and we don't see the real individual, but who they portray themselves to be. But God gets to the interior of a person, the noose, the person who wants you to be locked down and changed and have a rope around your neck, even hanged you, have you in a bad place. The chains have you bound to uh, their thoughts and their will for your life. So God's details, he told me how to fashion that cover. And I did as he told me to do, and uh, it is profound. It is. It's awesome. Because the lady, at, at the, what you said, is looking victorious because of God in her life in the face of those challenges. Yes, she is. It's awesome. Okay, so let's start where the book starts. Let's talk about the disclaimer. You talked about, and let's tell your audience, because you thought it important to have it prior to your first chapter, what did you want the audience to know, particularly about this book, and why did you put a disclaimer? Well, the disclaimer is, um, it deals with race relations, race relations. And with that, I say that uh, this, these are the incidents that happened to me. Not everybody in one race is good or bad, and each individual has their moments. I'm not perfect either. I have my moments. But these are incidents that happened to me, and I went to God the Father on how to deal with them. So it says, um, and with that, he helped me. Um, so like I said, no person in any race is all bad. But these things did happen and gave, God said I'm not the only one dealing with them. He can help me and others through what I went through with his answer to the challenge. Okay, next question. Okay, in your, in your book you mentioned growing up and not accepting your looks and just not really loving yourself and so and what you saw in the mirror. And I know there are a lot of women out there and people in general who feel this way. So can you tell us about how you felt growing up feeling that way and how it kind of touched you and how, how it maybe even affected you today? Oh my gosh, so excellent question, because a lot of us deal with this, especially in the black race, God's children, but we're still God's children, we are God's sons and daughters, and I think it came from uh, television, from what I heard, watching slavery movies even, mm -hmm. showing us in a bad light, in a derogatory way, as if that's where we came from, slavery. And it wasn't until God washed my mind with his word that I overcame that, that thinking. And I say, God, but, but it was me intentionally reading his book, reading his holy word, that helped me to not feel that way. And, and I would bleach my skin. I would put a pin uh, on my nose. <laughs> you know, a, a clothes pin. Uh, people don't probably don't even know what a clothes pin is these days. But we used to put remember. clothes on the outside. And I, I did that. And so thinking I was not right, but praise God for helping me to see that he made me perfect and to love myself. Awesome. Okay. So we get to get to chapter one, and that's what we're going to talk about today in this interview, chapter one. How are you going to call, how are you going to call unclean what God has called clean? And that's a great title. So in reading, so that title in reading your book, it's, to me, it meant God loves me. God created me. How can I not love what God created? Is that what you were going for when you wrote that title? And, and what does it mean to you? Uh, 
excellent question. Um, because yes, we can see ourselves as unclean and not worthy and have an inferiority complex. Exactly. Because the self-love, it starts with us. And God said in the Bible, we are made in his image and likeness. That's profound. So do we act and treat ourselves in a way that we are to reflect positivity and reflect God's image and not, not even the negativity of the other black faces we see on TV, but to reflect God and what we do to tap into our divinity. So that's what I encourage your audience to do is to know God's word, to know that you were made in his image and likeness and made by him. Did God make a mistake when he made you? Absolutely not. That is so freeing and so powerful. It builds confidence, self-assurance. It builds um, self-love and self-worth. And uh, even when someone else wants to call you unclean, you remember what God said, I made you perfect. Exactly. And you, so, okay, next question. You spoke about being out of God's will when you chose to think negatively about yourself, your looks, or about your, yourself, and what God had created. If you're out of God's will and you're thinking that way, that's not, that's definitely not good. So that's just pretty much what you just said. When we're thinking negatively about ourselves, we're out of God's will. Exactly, my beautiful sister. Uh, God gives us a royal heritage, not a slave-minded heritage, a royal heritage, a royal priesthood. And so it's so important for us to teach our children so growing up when you're very young, that you're important, that God made you, Jehovah God created you, he fashioned you, your nose and your eyes and your lips and your hips, just like he deemed, and, you, and his details are in each and every one of us. God is just that random, he's just that unique in how he makes us, how to... We're so different, but we ought to be strong in that difference. Be okay to be different. Accept you for being different. Accept me for being different. Right, right, exactly. Okay, my last question. So you spoke about your first, it's not my last question, you spoke about your first negative ideas about who you are. And where did, where did that come from? Tell me about that. That is perfect. That's a good question. My first um, negative viewpoint of myself came from my father. Who would tell me I would never amount to anything and I could do nothing right? So it came from my home. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot that happens a lot. It really does. And so we have to look outside sometimes. And that's what happens to a lot of young girls. We look outside of our homes ourselves. They look towards little boys or something else, maybe drinking or getting in trouble. And maybe that's where our self esteem starts to plummet. So hopefully that didn't happen to you. Hopefully you found another way. Well, that is so true. Um, and when you mention that question, it makes me think to say to mothers and fathers, be careful what you say to your children because you can be damaging their self-esteem. And uh, two, if you've been the person who was, um, your self-esteem was damaged, to seek God, ask him to help you to build up your confidence and self-love for yourself. Okay, so the second negative influence that you mentioned came from those in your neighborhood neighborhood and just outside in your surroundings. How was that for you growing up? Well, I had the most, the craziest experience going to the state fair one year. Mm -hmm. Just walking at the fair, out of the blue, a white guy called me a nigger. Oh my God. Did not know him, never seen the guy before. And I was like, why would he do that? It may, you know, and then I know I'm not the only person that has happened to. What do you do? What is a Christian recourse to being called a nigger? in a hateful, spiteful, derogatory way. Right. I mean, what do we do? We have to, I guess not what we think to do initially, because of course you always have those initial reactions. Yes. So if we're gonna be like God, we can't go with that initial reaction. Exactly, and so in the book, in chapter one it says to look forward to that answer in the book, but I'll tell you what God told me to say. And this is what the archangel said to uh, the devil when they were disputing where the bones of Moses were buried. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Mm -hmm. How about that? I wonder what he would say to that. What would How he say? can you fight that? That's How a recourse. That? that is an awesome, awesome way the to fight The Lord it. rebuke you. Wow. <laughs> and you mentioned several instances of things that have happened to you. And it was just very painful.
painful in reading it, you know, things that, and I've had instances in my life, I've been called the N-word. As a small child, I remember, and I'm in my 40s, and I've never forgotten that. So it definitely takes a toll on your life, you know what I'm saying? So if there are people out there who have gone through that, or who are still going through that, what would you tell those people? You I just told them how to deal with it, and that initial reaction, but like I said, I'm in my 40s, and I still re remember it, it may still be affecting me. How do you deal with that on a day to day? I would definitely just say to you and the people out there who've been called a nigger, one, to know your self worth mm -hmm. and that is not who you are. Just because they said it does not that does not define you. So know for yourself, mm, bye Felicia, negative, that is not who I am. You gotta know it for yourself though. So that word doesn't affect you because I rely on God's word. It's like, oh, I don't even know. He said something. I can't even relate to that. I mean, if, if someone called Jesus a nigger, Jesus would be like, you know, I know who I am. And that's why we hear that in sermon so much to know who you are. Because, and then if you've heard it and it has affected you, I would say to pray for the person because that really uh, addresses their low self esteem for them to call you that in a hateful, spiteful manner. Pray for them. Lord, have mercy on their soul because they were so evil to say that to a young child or a person. I was a teenager at the time. Or to let those words spitefully come out of their mouth. Lord, have mercy on them. They need prayer. They do. They definitely do. Okay, lastly, you mentioned the story of Pharaoh in parallel to some of the things that you've gone through in your life. Tell us about that. Okay, so Pharaoh and Moses and the Egyptians. That's a big story in the Bible. Uh, in Exodus and I would encourage everyone to read that because it tells about oppression and sometimes you may even not even know you're being oppressed because you don't have a viewpoint and an idea of what oppression is well the Bible lays it out uh, they treat them shrewdly and spitefully and harshly and um, so when you see that then you know I'm getting oppression these people are not my friends you know they are oppressing me it's unrighteousness, vile, and evil, and wickedness. So there's that, you know what it is so that you can deal with it. And then what Moses did was, and the Egyptians, um, the Israelites cried out to God. Sometimes we leave God out of it. And so we stay in the cruel situation at work, hostile work environment, they weren't working, or at home in life, if someone deals with you cruelly, um, because we don't cry out to God. So the first thing I would say is to cry out to God for help. Lord, you see how they are treating me. This is unrighteous in your sight. It is crazy. And two, um, God sent Moses. You may be the Moses of your day. You may be the Moses of your day to not only help yourself, but to help those around you. you and then, thirdly, to use the word God says to use. God said, now say this to Pharaoh. He didn't say use my words or your words. And, and in the book, it details me using God's words to that, speaking to that authority figure or that oppressive spirit mm -hmm. to deal with them in a godly way as he directed me. So say the words that God tells you to say. And then watch the mighty, strong, delivering hand of God work in your life Absolutely. like never before. And he will take you to such a good place that you will worship him. Definitely. Most definitely. I want to thank you for this interview. It's an awesome book. We only went through the first chapter. So I would like to open this book up um, and read the rest. And I want to offer it to your audience to get it on Amazon, right? That's where it can be found. Yes. Amazon. That's where I ordered it from. Okay. Yes. So just make sure that you get this book. It's an awesome read. Make sure you get the book. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's an awesome read. Make sure you get the book. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.